Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about home storage batteries. Specifically the fact that many installers say that you can't have two different brands of battery and you definitely can't have an AC and a DC battery working together. So thanks for tuning into this video. So those of you who have been a subscriber for a while will know around six or seven years ago now at my old house, I had a solar array installed and I got this, the Tesla Powerwall 2 with the original gateway, so no backup capabilities. But back then, the Tesla Powerwall 2 was definitely the best battery to get. 14.5 kilowatts of storage, 13.5 kilowatts um, of kilowatt hours of usable storage, five kilowatt hour uh, discharge and charging capability. And it just was the best price pound per kilowatt hour and basically I got a good deal on it as well as part of the install so it was fantastic. I brought that with me to this house and then when I decided it was time to be able to get a, a new solar install and some additional storage, um, obviously the obvious route is to go and get another Tesla Powerwall 2. But things have changed, um, it was like £2,000 extra just to get the Gateway 2 so I could have backup which would have been nice but isn't super required and many installers will tell you we've got a Tesla you've got to get another one or well, whatever battery you have you have to get another one of those well it's been a year now and as you can see I have two give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries as well they've been working together for a whole year without any real issue so I thought I'd explain kind of how I have these things set up how it works so that you know, if you want to, if you already have a Tesla Powerwall 2, you don't have to spend, I think it was like 12 grand, I think I got quoted at the time, um, to get another one, because again, I need the new Gateway 2. For the same price as one of these, actually it was less, I got two of these 9.5 kilowatt hour give energy batteries. So let me get myself sat down and we'll go through kind of how I had things set up, how things work, and the pros and cons of this sort of setup. So this here is my little plant room. I thought I'd just explain uh, how things are connected up so it makes sense as we go through things. So we will ignore the Give Energy stuff for a minute. We'll just talk specifically about the Tesla Powerwall 2. So up here is the old original gateway. So this is what talks to the Powerwall. This is then connected in over here, so this is the isolator switch for the Tesla Powerwall 2 and then I have a separate consumer unit up here for all the stuff in this little plant room. So that then can provide power to the house, assuming there is a grid connection, if there is a power cut with that um, original gateway, no grid isolation, no islanding of the house, so it won't provide the power anymore. And then what I've obviously had with the new solar install at this house, I have this, the Give Energy 5 kilowatt hour um, hybrid inverter that has its own um, DC isolation on there, but then additional isolation here, uh, AC isolation I should say was down there, um, DC isolators for two strings, then I also have an EPS circuit which can be isolated here, and that connects back into another separate um, consumer unit which provides power for the sockets and the lighting in this new extension in the house and it's EPS so it's not um, UPS as much as that sticker says on there so basically what happens is it has a power outage it, it happens very quickly but those circuits um, for the lighting and the um, sockets can have backup power either directly from the solar, if solar generation is happening, or from the two times 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries that we have here with the Give Energy setup. And it works really, really well. Uh, it wasn't actually enabled by the installer when they did it, so I took that and sorted out. Well, that's kind of the setup of kind of how things work in isolation. So obviously, Tesla Powerwall 2, AC battery, 
and um, the give energy batteries DC batteries connected into this um, inverter so when I first had things installed um, it kind of worked how I thought it would and I'll just explain how I thought it was going to work so the reason why having two different types of batteries connected up is not optimal is because to some extent they are going to fight each other and basically one of them for, for one reason or another will take the position as being the primary battery so I wasn't sure if that would be the Tesla or the Give Energy batteries but basically something would be discharging and that would then inadvertently charge um, something else so I knew that there would be some kind of, of issue there um, and I assumed that um, probably the Give Energy batteries would be um, the primary and again we just have this little bit of loss overall and it wouldn't be a problem and in general that's kind of how things worked but I did realize I had some configuration issues and this is why I'm making this video so if you go this route you can hopefully have things working properly so let me tell you how I had things set up again it's been a year now um, I need to go for another winter I think to make sure these actual settings are, are working best so originally how I had this set up is that um, off peak both batteries should charge um, off peak for seven pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, if you're looking to get a good deal, actually, um, for off peak electricity and you meet the requirements, use the link below to join Optimus Energy. You and I will get £50 credit to our bills. So, yeah, so both batteries filling up at seven pence per kilowatt um, overnight. And then during the day, obviously, they would then take it in turn to do their discharging. Um, and that's actually another bonus of having two different battery types is I can discharge at five kilowatts from the power wall and 3.6 from the give energy. So what that means is there can be 9.6 kilowatts of draw or 9.6 kilowatt hours of draw from my house and both batteries can work together to provide that whereas obviously if I only had one or the other, I'd be limited to the five or limited to the 3.6. So I get the best of both worlds there. Um, so how things were working is with the Gateway 1, you basically have no configuration options at all with the Tesla Powerwall 2. So what I mean by that is you can tell it when you want it to charge and discharge, but you can't tell it to do things at certain times, like very easily anyway. You can't say... Um, don't charge from solar and other things. I've, I've messed around with all sorts of stuff to try and get it to work with certain certain ways and even disconnecting the CT clamp from the old solar and everything. But basically the way things work now is this. Uh, and a key point for the Tesla is because it's smart and it tries to do smart things, it doesn't know that you have a hybrid inverter. So what it can try and do is not charge to 100% even though you've told it to because it knows when the off-peak time finishes for me at half past five in the morning it gets power from somewhere solar it thinks maybe which obviously is coming from the hybrid inverter with the batteries discharging then from the give energy batteries into the power wall now that's kind of what I expected would happen but not expecting the power wall to only charge to like 50% because it knows at half past five in the morning there's 3.6 kilowatts coming from somewhere so it can charge it. So obviously then what would happen is around, uh, what is it, six and a half-ish kilowatts, kilowatt hours of energy would come out of the Give Energy batteries into the Tesla, get that to 100% within um, about two hours then my give energy batteries are fifty percent full, but the power wall is one hundred percent. So the reason that seemed to be happening, um, and it touch wood, it, I've only proven this just before the summer started, so I need to go for another winter to check. But it was the fact I didn't have the right pricing information in the configuration for the power. So I'll put that up on the screen here, and it's actually one of the people in the Spectrum Geeks um, Discord channel that kind of mentioned that point and as soon as I set it up things started to behave 
So now what happens is overnight, and especially during the summer, the power was not getting used at all, to be honest. It's kind of like a secondary thing. It sits there. We never deplete the, um, the given energy batteries at the moment, but come winter, we will. So now the power will charge up overnight if it needs to, to 100%. Regardless of whether there's these other batteries working or not, I did initially set up the Give Energy batteries to not start discharging until 10:30 a.m. when I knew there'd be solar generation to trick the power wall into thinking that there's no solar generation until um, half past ten, which did work in terms of tricking it into charging to 100%. The problem I had then. Um, was obviously in the winter if the power will fully depleted by half ten because we're all off gas now um, that could mean that the power was fully discharged and then we pull from the grid which we don't want and the other issue I had was we did have a power outage and I couldn't work out why the EPS circuit wasn't working and it was because that power outage happened at 7am and obviously there was no solar at the time and the batteries wouldn't discharge until half past ten um, that was all before I had the Tesla um, uh, costs in there. So that's how I have things set up now. Tesla's fully charging itself and will discharge as needed. Um, the Give Energy batteries, I'll put the little config up for that as well. They're just set up as standard, running eco mode. Um, to start discharge from half past five in the morning to half past 11 at night and then half past 11 to half five off peak fully charge themselves to 100%. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, I'm exporting any surplus solar that happens during the time. So that's the setup. I hope it kind of makes sense. Um, I, I will again, just, just to reiterate it. In terms of primary and secondary, the Give Energy setup is kind of primary in terms of that's the batteries that will discharge first. Then second to that, or in addition, if there's more power than the batteries from Give Energy and the solar can supply, the power will then kick in and support it. In terms of charging from solar, what will happen is if um, there's any surplus solar that isn't being exported, it will charge the power up first, because obviously that's essentially doing a grid pull as far as the uh, Give Energy battery or Give Energy Avert is concerned. And then after that, the um, Give Energy batteries will charge up. So that's a setup. It works really, really well. I'm really happy with kind of how things are set up. Yes, if you had all just Give Energy batteries, it would probably work better. Yes, if you had just powers, it might work better and it's easier to kind of understand what's happening. But for the cost, no regrets. And I'm actually thinking I've got, when this room is finished and these doors are out of the way, there's enough room for another 9.5 kilowatt hour battery and I'm going to put that in there as well. So the only issue that you have if you're into data, uh, which I kind of am, um, it's, it's hard to see and get good data in your battery setup in, in its entirety because obviously when the Give Energy says it um, put a certain amount of energy to your batteries, it's only the Give Energy batteries. So then what went to the grid or came from the grid to the house isn't just house, it's house and the power wall. So it kind of screws up um, the data a little bit. But again, I'll do a couple of overlays if it makes sense to kind of just show you what, what's kind of happening. Um, the only thing I have noticed, like now in the summer, let me just move the camera around here, if it's showing, is sometimes for some reason, the power wall uh, kind of goes into some, some sort of extended standby it's quite odd not quite sure um why it does it to be honest but everything still um but it's fine it's still under warranty so if there is any issues and again i guess talking about warranty again no issues because these things out there they're separate to each other right so th there's no kind of conflict of, of, of problem i think just generally a lot of the solar installers kind of don't think through how things might be wired up and, and set up, but I can assure you that things work. So I think I've jibbered on for long enough. If you've got any questions or comments about how things are set up, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them. But yeah, one year now, 
few teething problems to start with, but now these two batteries work absolutely perfectly together. Hope you've enjoyed the video, hope it was helpful. If I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one. Consider subscribing if you haven't done already. Please like this video, share it with others. Until next time, goodbye for now.